So Ruben, you can start sharing your screen. So Ruben is our uh, instrument program scientist and also acting head of uh, project support department. So you have a 15 minutes and we'll have a five minute uh, for the Q&A session. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, I prepared this talk in collaboration with Andy Adamson, our Associate Director for Operations. And uh, this is presented on behalf of all uh, Gemini Instrument Scientists. The presentation uh, will focus on updates uh, uh, about the instruments and uh, recent, ongoing, and planned upgrades. However, uh, each slide will provide complementary information for those persons who are less familiar with each instrument. So you can download the PDF and use it as a reference about our Gemini instrument program uh, during this uh, week of meetings. So uh, we start with an overview of the facility instrument capabilities that we offer now, and we are expecting to offer uh, in the next year. Um, this table summarizes which are the seven facility instruments that we are currently offering, uh, plus ghost that we expect uh, to commission in the first semester of 2022. Uh, from the statistics of 2018, uh, 2019, uh, which were um, normal years in terms of science operations, you can see that we have a group of uh, inst facility instrument instruments that we can consider the um, workhorse instruments. The optical workhorse instruments, which are used about 900 hours per year for doing science, and our uh, near-infrared uh, workhorse instruments, which are the Nears and Flamingo 2, which are used about 500 years uh, each, uh, sorry, 500 hours each, uh, each one per year. Uh, there is another group of instruments that provide specific capabilities on uh, adaptive optics uh, imaging and uh, integral phase spectroscopy, and in the near future, uh, high resolution spectroscopy. What is common to all the facility instruments is that they have to be robust and reliable. So the instrument suite must enable multi-instrument queue and uh, switching instruments in about two minutes, which is a typical slew time of the telescope from one point to the other in the sky. This to allow an efficiency of the multi-instrument queue and also uh, to sustain a strong rapid target of opportunity service, which is another capability that, uh, a world-class capability that Gemini has been offering successfully for many years. Um, so we start with each uh, instrument, our workhorse optical instruments, which are the Demoses. Um, a, trick, a critical system of uh, this instrument is uh, the uninstrument waveform sensor, uh, which uh, intends to minimize the flexure between the waveform sensor system and the focal plane unit especially in the multi-object spectroscopy and the uh, long slit spectroscopy for higher resolution. And of course, with small or no vignetting for the almost 30 square minute field of view that uh, GMOS has. Uh, there was uh, recently a mechanical fault with an instrument wavefront sensor. Uh, therefore, we have switched to guiding with the telescope periphery wavefront sensor which unfortunately has a vignetting of about 30% on average of the field of view. So we are uh, planning an intervention, a five week intervention in our laboratory and we expect to have the instrument waveform sensor back online uh, in October. Um, the detectors were upgraded twice, uh, twice in the last decade. Uh, as many of you know, in 2017 by the Hamamatsu detectors uh, and uh, one thing that has remained there, one issue, is that the GMOS CCD1, one of the three CCDs, has an intermittent uh, charge transfer efficiency issue, which affects the blue end of the spectra and um, affects significantly the northern shuffle uh, mode. Uh, this uh, issue is currently not present, but after all the investigation, we have not discovered which is uh, the origin. So we cannot discard that after any thermal cycle of the, of the camera door, 
uh, uh, this uh, issue reappear. So we are uh, keeping an eye on this uh, subject. One nice feature that Jimos has is that it has 22 filter slots, which are easy to interchange, just uh, less than one hour in daytime operation. And many times they have uh, welcomed user design filters, including an instrument upgrade project award uh, a few years ago. We are considering another public request for proposals for instrument upgrades to carry on a small upgrade to one of the two demoses in 2023, as has been suggested by our Science and Technology Advisory Committee. And one option could be that the community group uh, proposes to uh, upgrade the broadband filter system for GMOS, exploiting all the improvements that there have been in the coating technologies for filters in the last years. There is a smaller grade uh, ongoing to providing a new low resolution grating that will uh, cover 4,000 Armstrongs, this uh, spectral resolution intermediate between the V600 and R400 uh, that will uh, aid all those programs that uh, currently require both gratings to be uh, scheduled at the same time to achieve a more uniform response in that range. Um, at Gemini North, our workhorse uh, near for an instrument is the NEARS, which has a variety of cross dispersed long slit and even a small imaging capability. Uh, uh, one interesting feature is that it can be used with the Alter Adaptive Optic System. So, for example, you can do uh, you can use a two pixel slit with uh, eighteen thousand resolution with a spatial resolution along the slit of 100 milliseconds. That's very nice. We're exploiting engineers versatility uh, by an instrument upgrade project. Uh, uh, we have two AFUs in the build phase. The metrology of the first uh, parts that have been built is excellent. So we expect a commissioning for the first semester of 2022. Um, for uh, reference, I have included a table of the uh, IFUs that we, integrity units that we expect to have in the next few years at the North. And uh, one thing to note is that the low resolution IFU, the one that will work with the natural sea engineers, has almost a, a very similar field size and spectral resolution of 7,000. And even uh, the sampling of the, uh, the relative sampling of the PSF in the infrared respect to the relative sampling of the PSF in the optical uh, of the IFUR of GMOS North. So uh, people will be able to explore uh, many synergies between the IFUs of the Mid North. The high resolution IFU will provide a spectral resolution of 18,000 from one to 5.4 microns, uh, more or less with a similar modes that you have in the long slit mode. And uh, interestingly enough, it will be used with the Alter Adaptive Optic System, so you will be able to have the spatial resolution of about 200 milliseconds. Flamingos 2 is our workhorse in infrared instrument in the south. It provides a nice imaging capability over six minutes field of view with 0.4 arc seconds under good uh, image quality. Um, it has uh, a series of long list modes uh, with low resolution spectroscopy. And in early 2020, we initiated the project to complete the last phase of the multi-object spectroscopy mode commissioning. Uh, this was completed in July, the July of this year. So we are now preparing the materials and assessing the performance report to offer the capability in 2022. Uh, the users will be able to um, plan masks of six times two minutes, place up to 150 slits if you are offsetting to the sky, to taking the, the sky frames, or uh, if you want to nod along the slit and have 100% of your exposure time on source, uh, you can place up to 70 targets uh, in the mask area. The focal plane unit allows uh, up to nine masks and it works at uh, 100 Kelvin, so you need the thermal cycle. We have uh, commissioned and tested the on telescope mass exchange. And after all the safety measures, uh, the cost of uh, the summer cycle is that Flamingos 2, while still staying on the telescope, will be not available for two nights uh, for Q observation. So this can be planned every uh, dark time. And if we do it monthly, we could, we could be able to offer up to 54 masks per semester. 
We're also considering considering further further upgrades for Flamingos 2. We received new spectroscopic filters that will raise its throughput in about 10%. We are going to improve the thermal insulation of our doors in order to diminish the load on the um, cryo coolers. And we are going to modify the utility wheel to include permanently the Y and J low filters in order to um, attend some uh, requests from the users. Uh, at Gemini North, uh, NERI provides our prim primary imaging capability. It works with the Altera Adaptive Optic System. Um, one issue that uh, uh, causes loss of time in the night is the detector controller has some instabilities. So we have a project to upgrade this detector controller, engineers detector controller too. So we start with NERI and we expect to be testing the detector controller uh, later this year. If this goes well, we are going to upgrade the engineer's detector control. NIFS, uh, our integral field spectrograph in the near infrared, is, uh, has been always uh, very stable. Uh, but recently, there was an issue with the cooling system. So the, its return to the telescope is delayed until October at the earliest. So the adaptive optic system at the Middle North was upgraded with a new laser in 2019. And we have procured new dichroics to alter uh, to increase the transmission under one micron over 2.4 microns. And these new dichroics are still in the testing phase, so they are not installed, installed permanently. At the south, our imaging adaptive optic system is based in the GSOI near infrared camera, which is quite stable. Uh, there is only a small issue, so we are considering uh, um, the replacement of the optical window at very low priority at this moment because it has developed some small stains that uh, only affect uh, the overall transmission and this can be corrected through the flat fielding. Uh, the GEMS system had a new laser commissioned uh, successfully in 2018 and we had a completely new natural guide star system, a new design that allows a much faster acquisition of the three natural guide stars and uh, also is more sensible so we can uh, use the stars uh, two magnitudes or more fainter than previously. So this has uh, considerably increased uh, James coverage of the southern sky. Uh, a third deformable mirror has been procured. It has successful laboratory acceptance in late 2019. And we have also started the project to upgrade the real-time computer in order to have a more stable system, especially in future uh, Q observations of uh, GEMS. And uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, started a, a feasibility study uh, about using GEMS with F2, Flamingos 2 spectroscopy, depending on how this goes in 2022, or, we might uh, decide to go to a full commissioning of Flamingos 2 plus GEM in uh, 2023. So last but not least, we have the visiting instruments. Here you have a table that uh, summarizes the capabilities offered by our frequent or uh, what we can call the resident visiting instruments. Uh, Maroon X increases our uh, um, uh, spectro spectroscopic uh, resolution up to 80, 88,000 in the optical. Um, eye greens uh, simultaneously in the H and K band to 45,000. We also have uh, Texas, which is a medium infrared instrument that comes from time to time and goes up to 25 microns and has a very high spectral resolution. And last but not least, uh, our um, visiting instruments, Alopec and Soro, provide speculative imaging with a resolution as good as 16 milliard seconds in a field of 6.7 seconds. This, ha this uh, had a detector, detector system that has very fast readout with exposure times that can be as short as 14 uh, milliseconds. So you can have uh, a very uh, fast sampling in fields as large as 60 seconds for natural scene. So I invite you to attend the uh, talks uh, by Greg Mays about the arguments in the future arguments too, Jacob Bean about Maronex, and um, Suresh Ivan and Dan will talk about Girmos on Wednesday, which is also 
the community led instrument project that will be complementing our, our general system. So all of us will be available for uh, chat sessions across this week. So please bring your questions and ideas about uh, our instruments or uh, future upgrades. Thank you. Thanks, Ruben, for a nice summary. <clears throat> there are two questions posted on Huba app. First question is about the GRACES usage statistics uh, posted by Bruno Castillo. How does it compare to the other instrument usage? Uh, I don't have those statistics from the top of my mind. Uh, the demand has been uh, always around the 10%, I think. Um, uh, and that's all I can say right now. We can answer it later. Okay. Uh, and there's another question posted by Marcos Morvidelli. Uh, what has caused the, the mechanical fault, like the lens crack mentioned in your talk? If we're talking about the uninstrument waveform sensor, it's a mechanical issue in the base mechanism, which is what moves the probe. Uh, the probe arm of the uninstrument waveform sensor into the beam in order to acquire the, the guiding star. Okay, thank you for that answer. And uh, the people who ask questions, you can also uh, post the follow-up question in the under that same questions. So please go, um, go ahead and let me refresh if there's any question I missed. Okay, I think those are two questions we had. <laughs> so thanks again for Ruben and thanks for like uh, those of who asked questions. And before we uh, move to the next, uh, next speaker, you can also uh, sign up for the chat session with Ruben and also Jennifer Lutz if you haven't done that so. <laughs>